morning Facebook. Uh, we'll wait a little bit for eyeballs to pop in. I don't know what the delay is, how long that delay is. It's usually like... Seven to ten seconds is normal. Okay. Yeah, it just did some funny things there. We are in Luke chapter 12, if you aren't there yet. Um, I hope to get done with chapter 12. Good luck with that. Uh, man. Can, can I go back to verse 11 and 12 from last week? We will. We will. We'll give you that chance. I'm, I'm just waiting to see if anybody else is going to come in before we pray, and then we can move on. Um, it's not showing. There you are. Am I? Is it on now? It's on. 37 seconds. Yep. Okay. Good. We had this problem last Wednesday at Grinds and Glazes. It took it a little while to to pop on. That's why we always, if you, if you never figure it out, that's why I'm always doing this with my announcements and stuff, uh, just to give that, that time for people to get in. Um, as we move forward, yeah, I, I told somebody uh, going into worship that I was only going to, you know, sing a part of one hymn yesterday I end up singing like three of them yeah. Yeah. there there was there I just felt the need to support and you were doing that without the mic and we could still hear you well I, I, I was just do, I was I was not I was not doing my normal I was doing that's the interesting thing with my therapy when I sing now I'm focusing in on the front of my lips <coughs> To sing because that's how she wants me to focus in on my talking so right now as I focus in on my talking I'm focusing in on the front of my lips uh, in doing that so let's begin with a word of prayer most gracious Heavenly Father we give you thanks again as uh, we gather together uh, as as we come into your word let this word unfold before us uh, and and as it does you know we just take our time to uh, chew uh, as we heard yesterday, you have put that word in our mouth and we just need to be able to uh, just savor it uh, with the time that we have. Not rush through it, uh, but savor it, let it nourish us, let it give us those nutrients that we need for our faith to express it properly. So guide and lead us with your Holy Spirit this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, question. Go ahead, Jenny. Remind us of the verses again. 11 and 12 in uh, Luke. 11 and 12 in Luke 12. Okay, Luke 12, 11 and 12. When you are brought before your, before synagogue, rulers and authorities, do not worry about what you will, how you will defend yourself. Will teach you all, teach you at that time what you should say. Mm-hmm. You're talking with somebody and you don't know how to respond and your first remark is, God, give me the words. And that's a prayer. And yeah. here we go, Lisa. Number one, as I ended my sermon yesterday, I said that we are, you know, as we move forward, we're going to be fed by a word that saves, enlivens, fortifies, and shapes our future. And, th and that's the fortification. And, and that's why we need to be in the Word. You know, when it says, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that hour what you ought to say. It's not necessarily at that very moment. He, 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 will, he will give you the words to say, but it's, it's by doing this that you will have the words to say. Right. Doing this teaches us to listen. It teaches, it, well, it, it as I said in my prayer, we, we, need, we need to just let that, that word just savor it. You know, enjoy the moment. Let, let, let it soak in. Right. 
Well, and, and likewise, um, growing up, I did not like to speak in front of crowds. I, I rarely would raise my hand in class. I did not want to go there. Well, now look at look at what God does. You know, uh, again, um, and, and and that's with each one of us as as, and and, th and that becomes the Jeremiah situation. That's why Jeremiah said, "Yeah, I'm too young. I don't know what to say." Well, we all fall into that trap. Um, but right, but but by being in this word. And I think that's the promise, Jenny, there. By being in this word, we, we don't have to fear. It's not like, okay, am I going to know the right answer at the right time? No. The Holy Spirit will teach you those things at that moment. Or what does it say? In that very hour. Yeah, Lisa. But also, I mean, if you are on rocky soil, if your words are going to fall on rocky soil then the Holy Spirit will also give you that guidance as well. I mean, I, I was in that situation just last week or the week before I was telling, I don't remember who I spoke to, but I found myself in a position where somebody was speaking, clearly not believers, and I didn't, I wondered, what am I supposed to do here? And I just didn't feel that that was the time or the place. So I, I think right. the, the, I know the Holy Spirit will guide you both ways. Correct, correct. Well, and 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 that becomes the Jeremiah situation again. Is you know I realize that these words are not going to fall and be accepted by some people. Mm -hmm. When do I pull back? But then also there are moments when I need to go ahead and say it anyway. Um, and and it really get and it really gets into um, <coughs> verse forty nine. I don't know if we'll get there, but well, I think Lisa's right. That there are times, and usually you, you know when those times are. But there are times when it's not the right time to speak, right. or it's going to work negatively. Right. But it's not up to us when we sow the seed. It's for us to sow the seed and let the right. spirit. Right. It's not for us to just, well, because I'm afraid I'm not no, going to do true. it. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and then and then you have the the one lady that said uh, let the crumbs fall from the yeah. from the table so that even the dogs can eat so yeah I mean you've got and again that's really what we're talking about you've got both going on and you really and that's where we really have to be mindful of this verse of we got to let the Holy Spirit guide guide us in, in those times will we get all those times right no no, and 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 so last last week we got to, to the parable of the rich fool. Uh, a lot of this parable is going to unfold in these next uh, passages uh, because Jesus will show the contrast to the rich fool. Because remember last week uh, w where uh, the rich fool talks to himself soul you have ample goods laid up for many years relax eat and drink and be merry so he's basically talking to himself he's seeking his own guidance you know again Lisa perfect point where we need to seek the spirit's guidance and counsel he's speaking as he's seeking his own guidance and counsel in, in, in what to do uh, and and so you get that last verse there where you know um, Jesus says, "So the one, so is the one who lays up treasure for himself, is not and is not rich toward God. His life will be taken, and everything else with it." So we get to do not be anxious. If somebody would read, oh man, go ahead, twenty-two to thirty-four. He said to his disciples, "Therefore I tell you." 
Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or about your body, and what we and what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are them than the birds? Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of life? If you could not be able to do this as a small, as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither so toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass which he is alive and the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for the nations of the world seek after things, things that your Father knows that you need them. Instead, speak of his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. How far? To uh, 34. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That sounds like a human. Tell your possessions and give, give to the needy. Provide yourself as, with money bags that you do not roll, or the treasure in the heavens that does not fail. There's no, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where, what your treasure is, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, it is a hymn. We sang it last Sunday. Have no fear, little flock. <laughs> um, again, notice he's, he's directing his attention to the disciples. Um, so so he, he's, he's gone from his attention to the one who asked the question. Now, now he's going to explain more from that parable to okay this is how you're not supposed to be this is how the pharisees act, because that's that's what he was really portraying there here's how the pharisees act which we are pharisaical uh, but this is how i want you to act um, therefore i tell you uh, therefore is a transition word uh, therefore i tell you do not be anxious about your life um, that word life if you go up to the word uh, about the rich fool that was talking to himself, soul, same word. So he's definitely making a comparison here with what the, with the parable that he just told. Um, so so that word soul, that word life, is the same word suke, which I said last week, where we get psyche or psychology. Um, so do not be anxious about your life and they should already know that because if you go to chapter 10 what happened in chapter 10 if you need to look go ahead and look because I had to go back and find it because <laughs> uh, I knew we had it but I didn't know where it was he sent he sent them out with nothing he tell, told them don't take anything with you it will be provided so he he's already building off of something that they've experienced and now he's reminding them he's reiterating that do not be anxious about your life um what you will eat nor about your body what you will put on uh and and that then you know then we get this and we get it twice the word consider we get it in 24 and we get it in 27 and this again, um, I was wondering why I needed to take Greek when I was at the seminary. I'll tell you, it is very helpful to have that knowledge of Greek because you can go back and, 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 and take a word like this where in the English, it's, and it's rendered correctly. Um, but I don't think we use the word consider in the same sense that Jesus wanted them. You know, usually when we think consider, it's oh, we'll think about it. 
th this, uh, the word is katanoe. It's, it's to know about. So you're not just thinking on it. You're, you're thinking on it to a point where you're going to understand it. Uh, so when he says, cons don't let this just be a momentary thought. Consider this. Think about it. Think about it to the point where you know what I'm talking about. Um, and and I, I think sometimes when we render consider, it's like a fleeting moment of passing thought. Uh, but he's saying, look at the ravens. Study them. Look at them. Know them. Understand them. This is what happens in their life. Um, oh, yeah. They didn't sow. They didn't reap. They didn't plant anything. They didn't pull anything out of the ground. Oh, yeah, by the way, what, how did this, the parable of the rich man start? But, but his, you know, it was his crops that did the work. You know, uh, the land produced plentifully. Uh, again, just like for the rich man, the land provided for him. So with the ravens, God is providing, and God's providing in both places. But I, I think it's a neat to, again, he's making a comparison between that parable and what he's saying now. This is how you're not supposed to do it. This is how you ought, again, remember, this is a catechism. This is how you are supposed to do it. Uh, and so, you know, you get the, um, and, and, you know, they didn't do anything, but God fed them anyway. Uh, the the lilies they didn't they didn't do the the knitting the toiling the spinning the they didn't make their fine clothing God did it anyway um, so you know you, not only consider these things but understand them understand them to the point of of, of, of the emphasis that Jesus is trying to make here um, but I I love verse twenty five. Have any of you fretted about something? Have any of you fretted about something for quite a while? What 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 did what did the fretting get you? Upset stomach. There you go. <laughs> Gray hair. Okay. Losing hair. Yeah. You know, some pe some people fret to the point where their hair falls out. Um, and that's really the point Jesus is trying to make here. You know, what what does your anxiety do? Nothing. And and it and it's interesting the translation there. It can be translated two different ways, and they're both correct. Can you add a single hour to your life? Or can it? And the other one is, can you? It's a measurement thing. Can, can you add an extra inch to your stature? Can you make yourself any taller by worrying? Not only can you add, add an hour to your life, but can you make yourself taller? No, you can't. Oh, whose hands are those things in? God's. Uh, and and that's really that's really the point here is God is the provider, and that's and that's what the rich fool didn't realize rich fool thought it was because of him god said uh, jesus says no it's because of god um and and that's why he said oh you of little faith um but then we move to verse 30 in verse 30 could this could this explain our world today as well as the world back in jesus's time I, I heard it, but I don't remember it. Last week on the news, they were talking about the Super Bowl commercials. There's always a big deal made about the Super Bowl commercials. And I want to say, and, and don't quote me on this because I don't know if I'm, I'm correct, but I know it, it's, it's close. I heard that it's going to be $7.8 million for 30 seconds. It's going to cost 
$7.8 million for a 30 second commercial. Who gets that money? The network. Who pays for it? <laughs> well, eventually, yeah. Eventually, yeah. I mean, that that you know that that's this sense here. Um, for all the nations seek after these things. How and and again, go back to the parable of the rich fool. What was he concerned about? How do I improve my place in life? Tear down my barns, build bigger barns because I got more stuff. And when they advertise, what are they wanting you to do? Buy more stuff. Yeah, Bob. This reminds me of that a coaching clinic once, and this coach who was very, very successful, and people were giving him all sorts of accolades and what have you. He said, "Great players make for good." Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So many times people think that they are so wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and 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 to remind us what Jack always says, it's that unholy triumvirate. Me, myself, and I. Uh, it's all about me, and that's what the rich young fool. And 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 again, Jesus directs them to where they need to be directed the nations seek after these things and then he says your father knows you need these things if your father knows you need these things guess what he's going to provide them if he knows that you don't need these things he won't provide them um, and and so, and so it says, instead, seek His kingdom, and these things will be added to you. So it, it's about, you know, looking. At, consider God. If I say consider God, now, hopefully you'll think of it differently. <laughs> right. So 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 yeah. Think about him to the point where you you want to get to the point of knowing him. Well, the only way we can do that is through the word. Okay? So when it says seek his kingdom, about the best way we can translate it is be in his word. Because that's where the kingdom is going to unfold. Now, granted for these guys, the kingdom was standing right in front of them. Okay. Now I ask this question, so be careful. <laughs> that right? No, no, nobody, nobody in the group's going to answer this question. Is is the idea of seek his kingdom works righteousness? Is is the is the because again it I, I I man I need to go back to my Greek on this one to see if it's an if it's an imperative it's a command and and that's the way I I'm reading it right here the way they have written it in English it's a command seek his kingdom if it's a it's a, if it's an imperative what do you have the Greek there Z A Y T E H O is that is that in here? Okay. Yeah, that's a command. That's a command. Yeah. It is a command. So literally, yeah. So so it is a command. Seek his kingdom. Okay? Yes. Is is that would would that then fall into that this is works righteousness? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get that so confused by our definitions and when they say our work, like the LCMS definition okay. of work. Uh, anything that we do on our own, we consider work. Uh, but if it's a command, are we doing it? This is where we have to be very careful in how we talk about it. If we do it on our own, but it's for His glory and not for our own satisfaction, then is that a further definition? I mean, a further explanation of 
See, I think it gets into the works of the Holy Spirit. If me, myself, and I am seeking, okay, I'm seeking all alone. That's a work thing because I'm seeking it for my own benefit. Right. Okay. But if the Holy Spirit working it within me says, seek His kingdom, read His word, be here at church, take the sacraments, do the service, that's the Holy Spirit's lead. That, that in fact, is not a works righteousness thing. That's just doing God's will. So there's your yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have, if I had been in all these Bible studies, and you just said what you did, I'd have a no clue what you were talking about. <laughs> I'd have a no clue what you were talking about. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you wouldn't understand the works of the Holy Spirit. And, exactly. and, and, and I, 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 I'm not saying you were wrong. No, I'm just, no, I know. I, I know. I'm just saying you. Again, again, this is a play with that first word, consider. Go ahead. Uh, this goes back to what I've told people when we talk about comparing Christianity to other religions. God is a very relationship. Or God is a relationship God. He is seeking relationships with us. So when we're getting to know him, it's not like it's, it's a self-help thing. It's, right. We're getting into the relationship. It's like when you have a relationship with your wife, you get to know one another. And I think that's what we need to tell you, is you get to know God in this sense of relationship, not to help me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, I can't get said any other now. Okay. Anybody else? Again, I think this is, this is a, a tie into that first word, consider. I, I think I, I think consider the ravens, consider the lilies, seek the kingdom, consider the kingdom. But here's the problem. This is where pastors pull a verse out of the fullness of the context. The context answers the question. Because read the next verse. And these things will be added to you. No, that that's st still in verse thirty-one. Read the next verse. Oh, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yesterday, I I I I admitted I had not I had not looked at the altar cloths. <laughs> Did I consider them? Yes. No. Yeah, no, I did not because I, I wasn't brought to the point of knowing. You were here for a long time. You guessed and got it right. <laughs> because Judy even noticed it. I even looked out of my sacristy door to see if I could see it. To see if I could see it. But where the altar cloths were, I couldn't see the altar. I could see the, I could see the back side of the altar cloth, but I couldn't see the front side of it. Okay, so I I'm couldn't. totally confused. Isn't Epiphany always green? That's why I just think we read for a long time. Isn't it? I mean, we don't... No, it, it can be white. Yeah. It can be white. Uh, it can be white. Uh, so, so that... that yeah, I, I think okay. I, we took it... We, we kept it white through Epiphany, I believe. We changed it after Epiphany. Yeah, after the baptism of Christ. Uh, so, so we had it for... Uh, because I think that I think that was the Sunday after Epiphany. I don't remember, uh, but we had it white for. But then, yeah, it's green until next next month. Mm -hmm. It'll it'll go purple. Um, but yeah, and and it was one. I I I had not. You know, in our typical sense, I had considered it, but in our new sense of understanding, I had not considered it because. And, and it's the same thing with seeking the kingdom. You know, realizing when we seek the and this it gets back to what you all were saying. God's going to give it to us. God, God's going to give it to us. Um, and that um, don't wait for it to fall in your lap. You know, I, you know, Gene, you're right in, in that. You know, it. It's not works righteousness, but but there is some working involved. I mean, we have to move. Um, 
granted, and, and this is where we got to be careful for an infant, they don't move very far. Uh, they have faith. Do they have an understanding of the faith? No. But they're not at that point. They, they have the understanding that the Holy Spirit gives. Um, so when that baby dies and goes, they go to heaven. Um, because it's the understanding of the Holy Spirit. And that's, and that's the, the idea of seeking the kingdom. It's, it's realizing we are part of this pre, uh, activity. God's a relational God. You know. And a relationship is not one way. Correct. Correct. But, but again, Jenny, as you started it, this, we got to take those two verses together because it's so comforting because we're not going to be frustrated when we seek the kingdom. Because he's going to give it to us. Um, for it's your father's good, your father's, that, what words? Your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This gives him joy to give you the kingdom. Um, and then, then as it continues on there, provide yourselves with, with money bags. Again, be careful about reading works righteousness in this. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail. What's that money bag? You know, again, if you, if, you, if, if you track where I started with this, I started with this back when the 72 were sent out and it said, take no bags. Take nothing with you. So, is he changing his mind here now? Um, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old. Again, keep track. Keep tracking, right? Because if you keep tracking, the next verse unfolds it for us. What's the money bag? No. Nope. Look at the next verse. The treasure, the treasure is the, for the treasure in heaven, which is Christ. Okay. What's the money? So what's the money bag? For where your treasure is, what's the money bag? Your heart. Your heart. Your money bag is the heart. The seed of your faith. Okay, wait a minute now. It says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Right. So how can your treasure be your heart? Your treasure... No, 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 I didn't say the treasure. I said, what's the money bag? I'm asking, what's the money bag? <laughs> I said, what's the money bag? Okay, my, my bad. The, the treasure is Jesus Christ. Okay. That's the treasure. That's the, it's the kingdom. But, but where is it kept? What's the money bag? The money bag's the heart, the seat of the faith. Um, and, and again, that's where you don't, and how many people, and th this is where you gotta be careful when you start sharing the word with people. You gotta be careful about sharing them a nugget. You know, one of, one of those nice uh, calendar nuggets that, okay, and, and, and and sometimes we do, and that's where we've got to be careful with what we post on Facebook too. You get these nice verses, and sometimes you've got to be careful because it doesn't convey the whole context. And so when we're witnessing to people, we've got to make sure that we don't just give them a, a, a nugget to, uh, a crumb to, to, to eat off of, that we give them a good, good, as I said yesterday, a good slice. Give them a good, a good hunk uh, of it. Uh, anything there on that section? Just one thing. Yeah. God provides this for everybody, whether you believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Does he provide all of it? The kingdom? He would like to. Mm -hmm. He provide he provides it. But there's, okay. They can reject it. They can reject it. It's like I want to give this to you. <laughs> Correct. Right. 
Oh, the one thing I forgot about 33, sell your possessions and give to the needy. That's the contrast of the rich fool. He wanted to keep it all for himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so again, that's, that's where you have to see this whole thing in light of the previous parable uh, that we saw before. And this, this then becomes, this is how you live. Don't worry about the stuff. Don't worry about the possessions. Worry, worry about the king. If you're going to worry about something, worry about the kingdom. He does provide it, Gene. He does provide it. Worry, you, 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 worry, worry about it if you don't have it. Worry about it if you don't know it. Um, if you're struggling with it, yeah. Um, be asking. Anything else? Uh, verses 35 to uh, 40, if somebody would read that. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come, to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door for him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds the waste when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service, and have them recline at, recline at the table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them away, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left the house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming. As you were reading that, I just got a new insight. That's cool. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Why did he throw the thief in there? I mean, we're we're going to get we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Don't worry. I, I figured that would be troublesome. With right. Well, and and and. It's not. It's not. Well, and, 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 and again, this is, this is why we should be seeking the kingdom. Because of this. Um, I hope you heard the end times in this. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure that you heard the end times in this. Um, so, so, to prepare for the end times, we need to be seeking the kingdom now. Okay. Uh, consider the kingdom, and, and and again, I'll I'll pound this one home all day today. Is are we going to fully know the kingdom on this side of eternity? No. 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 Right. We're not going to know it full, and and that's that that sense of con you're gonna you're gonna be contemplating it, working on it, seeking it to the point of knowing it. But that's a lifelong thing that you you need to work on. Uh, and so this carries that on. This carries on that sense of lifelong because look, uh, again, these are commands. If you're if you're seeking that kingdom, if, if you're if you're trying to be in that place where, where God is, it says stay dressed for action. Keep your lamps burning. Well, that takes it back to verse 22. Don't worry about what you put on. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the clarification of what you put on in the following verses, and then it says, stay dressed and be ready. And, and, and again, Dan's great at this. Dan, Dan knows a lot of the historical undergirding of things. Mm -hmm. it's Nice to know. Undergirding yeah, is we're is about clothing, right? Gird up well, <laughs> and that and and that's really the the phrase there is gird up your loins, because back in that day, they wore a long flowing garment, and so what they did was they pull. Think about me in my vestments, you know the long flowing garment. What what it would mean is pull it up from the bottom, and tuck it into your belt. Why? So you can move. So you can move. Run if you have to. 
so so that's what that's what it says dressed for action means you know don't be dressed that you you can calmly stay around be dressed to move and so have it girded up first okay Right. Well, and 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 that is the end time <laughs> for us, because because at because at death there's there's no, nothing else we can do about the end time except wait for it to come. Um, at that point. And, and and so and and again the visual because you know we know the parable of the ten virgins the 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 visual of the lamp burning is your faith keep it trimmed keep the oil in it keep it so that the the light doesn't go out oh by the way I think we need to have oil in the uh, candle lighter thing <laughs> I'm I'm looking at it and I'm going don't go out don't go out don't go out. <laughs> No, I didn't. Uh, uh, so, so it's like keep your lamp burning, keep your lamp burning. Uh, and um, it never gets done. Somebody else is get it. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so we we get to the point. They're waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast. Holy smokes, that's a lot to unpack. You're right. Who's the master? He's he's coming home from the wedding feast. Aren't aren't we anticipating the wedding feast? Yeah. But Gene, you got it. Be because, and this is, this is really why this is the end times, because where is he right now? He's with God. He, he, he's, he's at the place of the wedding feast. He's at the banqueting table. He's at the right hand of God. So he's coming from that time. So th that's why this is specifically the end time. Okay, so he, Jesus is coming. So, so we all who are ready, we're dressed for action. We got our lamps lit. We're we're waiting for Jesus to come back. You're talking about the second coming. Yes, yes. Um, so that they may open the door at once when he comes and knocks. That's going to be interesting. The whole world's going to know at the same time. Don't don't go. Consider that one, but realize you're never going to reach the idea of knowing it until <laughs> until it actually happens. Um, well, it's the omnipresence of God, right? He's here. He's there. He's all over the world. Right. I mean, he's there. Yeah, and, and we yeah. we cannot perceive it, yeah. but yet we know in our hearts he is here with us right now, right? But at first the dead will rise, and then we who are still alive will join with him. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, but but notice, notice what the master does. So, so the master comes, knocks on the door, they open it up, he comes in. Uh, he, well, he comes in if, they find, if he finds them, because they're not going to open the door if they don't find him awake. <laughs> if they're sleeping, the door's going to remain closed. Uh, but he finds them... But what does the master then do? He dresses for the service and then they... He serves them. He serves them. Mm. Mm. But isn't that what Jesus is doing in, in his return? Mm -hmm. He's serving us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that sense of recline at table is, guess what? We don't have to worry about being dressed for action anymore. We don't have to worry about our lamps being lit anymore because the bridegroom has arrived. And now he's going to serve us. 
Now those are comforting words, Jenny. Um, and and he's, and we don't know the hour. You know, if he finds us awake, and again, think it's not like being awake. If if you're if you're sleeping in your bed at the time when he comes, don't worry. <laughs> It doesn't mean that. It means awake in your faith. Um, so we don't have to stay awake the world. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> How many people who read the Bible literally have not slept? <laughs> I, I want to make sure that I'm found awake. Um, but then we get the contrast. And yeah, Lisa, you, this one tripped you up, didn't it? Right. If the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left. And this is the key. He would not have left his house to be broken into. And that's why I said, Gene, this, 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 when you read that, this, this idea popped in my head. Um, and I think it's correct. But the thief in the night, that's Jesus that's Jesus is coming. Go go to first go to First Thessalonians five two. He comes as a thief in the night. He comes unexpectedly. So what it is, what it seems to me is that it's a a reemphasis of being ready. It's it's a I think it and this is and this is why it popped in my head, it goes back to that sense before of who provides the kingdom we seek the kingdom but god gives us the kingdom and and when it says if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming he would not have left his house to be broken into god has not left his house able to be broken into he's given pastors He's given believers. He's given apostles. He's given the disciples. He's given the people. And, and the reason why I say this is because when you look at the next section, which we haven't started reading yet, but it's all part of as they... Uh, he's, given, he's given people to steward his gifts. The master has not left his house able to be broken into because he has given people for the stewarding of the gifts to make sure that they are ready and that when you were reading that it was that second half that popped into my head finally it was like he would not have left his house to be broken into and God has not left his house to be broken into because he's given us word and sacrament but he's also given us the, the ones to steward word and sacrament. So you also must be ready. And he readies us in that ministry. He readies us for the ministry, but he ready, res, readies us to give the ministry. Go ahead, Jack. Well, well I think we're getting confused because it says master of the house, but if you go back I'm, I'm confused because it says the master of the house and we were talking about the master returning but this if we go back to the translation definition it's the goodman or the housekeeper it's not necessarily the master and that I don't <laughs> which is word okadespas I have no idea how to pronounce it right but it's the, uh, it's, it's the housekeeper, it's not the master of the house. So if we read this in the sense that, you know, but if the housekeeper had known when the master was coming, you know, and, and then... And when the thief was coming. The next verse, and it separates it and says the son of man is coming in an hour. Well, I'm having a problem with what you're telling me, Jack, because why are our translations saying house owner? Mm -hmm. Both the NIV and I think the uh, ESV. And so, Jack, who would you say that that is? Second Peter says um, that the thief, the Lord, the day 
of the Lord will come. Like a thief in the night. Like a thief in the yeah, night. The day of the Lord. Not, not Jesus being the thief of the right. Day. But the right. Will come. will come like a thief. Right. Not, not Jesus. It's 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 the sense. Well, Jesus. In in some ways, Jesus is coming like a thief because he's going to take away from people what they think is theirs. In that sense, yes. But I'm, I'm still struggling. So who who then who well, would I'm you? I'm still struggling with these two verses because. It, it's as obviously not the Lord who is the master of the house, because, like you said, the Lord wouldn't leave His house. He doesn't leave. It. That that's what I'm saying. That it, it's 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 a form of speech that is telling you something in the contradiction of the way it is. Paul does that in his writings. He he tells you something in a contradictory way, but he usually says forbid it and no way right. and that's really what's happening here it's, Jesus is trying to emphasize God's got this okay so you're, you're, you're saying that you're, you're spelling it out there like oh, if, yeah. if the master of the house had known what hour the thief was coming he would not have left his house to be broken into does the master of the house know when the thief is coming does God know when Christ is going to return? Only God knows. And and that's what it says. If he doesn't know, well, God knows, and that's why he's not leaving the house to be broken into. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and that and right, and and that's uh, again because the word master is used up above and we were referred to it as Jesus but remember we're, we've got the triune God going on here <laughs> you know so Forrest did you have your hand up for something? I did I think the point I have is when like what you were saying is it's like you got the master of the house in this sense and that's what we were saying it's not empty because up above you got the servants which are the pastors and the which which is which is my frustration when when people talk about oh they've taken this out of government they've taken this out of the school they've taken this out folks has God left servants to keep the thief from catching us unprotected and unguarded God has left the thing and it's like by the way I, I will have another editorial in the newspaper tomorrow <laughs> and it speaks to that matter it speaks to the matter because somebody somebody responded to my first editorial and they brought up all these government things you know if, if you know if the government Basically, the government has repelled religion, and if the government would just put religion back in where it needs to be, everything would be taken care of. I responded to it. Can we tweet it? North Georgia News. Yeah, so. Yeah. So. I know, I'm a heretic. But it just it just gets my ire up. Let the church be the church. And oh, by the way, turn turn them to the next verses. And I'm I'll read it. We we've got about five minutes, and I'll I'll read a little bit of it. And I'll read the whole thing, and we'll we'll start here next week also. Peter said, "Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all?" What would be the pastor Dave answer? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord said the Lord doesn't answer that way but he just goes on and the Lord said who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes truly I say to you 
he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and to drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required, and from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Now see why I made that connection to the last verse. And this is why it's so important to read things in the fullness of the context. Because now he's saying, who is the wise and, and faithful manager? You know, now, now that... You know, as he owns the house, and, and and does God manage the house? Oh, absolutely. Right, but but now he he has his other managers to to do those things, and I'll I'll go back and look to see what this word is compared to the other one. Yeah, I, um, it just throws me for a loop because if it's going back to the house manager, it throws the whole meaning differently. I don't know. You look it up. And we'll, well, about it next week. yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 it, it's really that that steward of the and and the other thing I I, I hit here um, that I, I want to mention before we get into uh, get into the fullness of it next week is verse forty four. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. Whose possessions? Track the track the conversation here who's again he's talking about who, who is who then is the faithful and wise manager truly I say to you he will set him the wise and faithful manager over all his possessions yeah go back to the rich young fool Whose possessions did the rich young fool think he had? He thought he had his own. And like with, likewise with the wise and faithful manager, whose possessions are they? They're God's. And we need to be mindful of that. That all we are are merely managers or stewards. First of all, what, we are, what are we stewards of? word and sacrament ministry that's the primary importance that's where the kingdom gets revealed but secondary importance aren't we also wise and faithful managers of our financial resources our buildings things like that sure so so the primary the primary possession is word and sacrament ministry then all these others are still necessary for the ministry and we still need to be wise stewards of them. Um, and then we'll get into all the beatings next week. <laughs> we'll, get into the, we'll get into the beatings next week. The beatings will commence. Uh, well, let's close. What? Okay. Well, we don't have to fear the beatings. Because look, look at who the beatings are for. The beatings are for those who did not get ready. Let's, let's close the Facebook group out and then we'll, we'll have community prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word again. Uh, so often we get so caught up in, in, into possessions and we get so focused on that and, and trying to meet the needs of our daily living that we we forsake the the true possession that of word and sacrament that you give to us you give us your kingdom uh just enable us to to be in that process of considering to the point of knowing that kingdom we will not fully know it on this side but continue to help us to strive to be in your word where you reveal that to us uh to 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 know as best as we can uh as we keep moving forward 
so that we can also explain it to other people. Guide us and lead us in those times of letting, uh, being ready to, to run, but also having our lamps lit for others to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Jack reminded me if any of you have prayer requests that you would like to uh, get on the prayer list, uh, just please type those in or send an email to the church or call the church and uh, we will uh, lift your concerns up in prayer. Well, as we go, uh, as we always conclude, let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.